Hey y'all, Laura here with Cox Homestead, and today's video is going to be all about raising rabbits in the winter. And we have a lot of experience this week with raising rabbits in the snow and freezing temperatures in particular. I'm gonna head into the house to record this video, but I just wanted to let you know, it takes a lot of gear to stay warm and to do these chores. <laughs> I have on um, a nice jean jacket with a Sherpa lining, a scarf, something to cover my ears. Really, I could have used my face mask today. I didn't grab it. I should have. And I have big, huge, thick Carhartt gloves. I took them off to hit record. So you're first going to want to start with making sure you are well prepared in your clothes because you're not wearing a fur coat to take care of your rabbits in the winter. On the bottom, I have on Carhartt lined jeans with um, some uh, thermal pants underneath of it. I also have Carhartt overalls. No, I am not sponsored by Wrangler or Carhartt. Just telling you the brands that I have. Um, the I've been just using my jeans this week because it's been easier for me to get them on and off and get out the door. Not as cumbersome because I'm out here for 30 minutes or less most of the time. So first of all, if you're planning to raise rabbits outside, anywhere that gets temperatures that are cold, make sure you have the right gear. I'm going to head back to the house, record all about all the other details in my nice, warm, comfy, heated home. God is good, y'all. Our heat has worked all week. So I'm going to go back in there and tell you some more. Cox Home said we raise more than just rabbits. We also have chickens and sheep and livestock guardian dogs. And we have worms, um, which could be talked about because it's winter and do your worms live through the winter? Um, and we have gardens and um, all sorts of different activities that come and go here on the homestead. Uh, but I I'm not gonna go over all that today. I'm just gonna focus on the rabbits in particular. I do have some eggs out here for a midday check because along with giving some water to rabbits that need it, I also gotta check for those eggs. So um, today in particular, I am focusing on rabbits. We do raise everything regenerative agriculture style, meaning all of our animals are being moved very frequently and the snow has made that a challenge for my rabbits. I'll be telling you about how we handle that today. I am back inside in the warm and I was able to set up my camera where you can see the snow behind me still, just to add to this whole wintry feel of this video. Brad just went out to take care of our animals for the evening and I stayed behind today uh, just so I could spend some time thinking about what it is I wanted to share with you for this video. We have rabbits in three different locations. We have some in our barn, which you see featured in all of my videos with the barn quilt on the on the front of it. We have hanging cages in there. All, the, all, of, all of the housing in there is metal cages and they are up off the ground with poop falling underneath and we collect it and that sort of thing. But in the barn, all of the rabbits in there have heated waterers. We purchased these at Rural King. And when we first started getting them, I think they were $20 a piece and now they are about $22 a piece. Uh, we didn't have them the first two, three years of raising rabbits. It wasn't until a couple years ago I'm, I'm saying years, like I know I'm keeping track, um, <laughs> that we bought those. I think it was, oh goodness, it may have been three years ago now we bought those. I'm not for sure. It's been a couple of years. We've been using them and they have done really well for us. This is the first winter we've ran into a little bit of issue with one that likes to drip. Uh, we're just going to take it apart and see if um, cleaning it out will help. Maybe that dripping situation. Um, but water has frozen up underneath where it drips. So we took that out and replaced it for now with another one. And hopefully we can clean it and work on it and get that one going. But for 22 bucks a piece, these guys work pretty daggone good. All, all they do is keep the water from freezing. It's not like they're getting hot tea uh, from these heated waterers. It's just warm enough to keep it above the freezing temperatures and warm enough to where you don't have to worry about your rabbits going without water. They have a constant flow of water with those waterers as long as you keep them full. We have enough that we can go out once a day, meet all of their needs and things be good. However, that being said, when we are snowed in, I have gone out way more than once a day. I usually go out at least twice a day to check on everyone because we also have 
rabbits kindling. But before I talk about my kindling rabbits, I'm gonna finish talking about the two other places that we have rabbits right now. Um, number two, the second place is in rabbit tractors. We have one tractor going right now and we do not have any sort of heated waterer for that. So it is all just out in the field nature. <laughs> <laughs> the first day it snowed, Fred thought, well, I'll, he, th he tried to move the tractor like we do every day, which I hadn't got to discuss with him. Hey, maybe we shouldn't move it today. So he tried to move it and uh, there was no moving it, which I was so glad that he didn't get to move it because I did not want him moving those rabbits and sitting them on snow. Um, the, the saying goes, a wet rabbit is a dead rabbit. And I think I'm going to take that a little bit further and say a wet rabbit is in the cold that can't get dry is a dead rabbit. So, because if you think about it, in nature there's wet rabbits and they still live, but they have, like, most rabbits burrow and they have a place to go and can get dry and warm up. And so I was nervous about pulling that rabbit tractor on the snow. If you have experience with that, please leave it in the comments and let me know. So we did not move the rabbit tractor when we started getting this snow. Um, if you are in an area that has more snow in the winter than not, I don't know that I would recommend rabbit tractors in the winter months. We usually don't have the snow, or if we get snow, it might be here a day or two, not seven days so far. And <laughs> We really don't have a chance of it melting until Monday, and so we it'll be like, I've lost track. I don't even know. The snow started coming a week ago, Monday. So it'll be like eight, nine days probably um, before the snow is completely gone and we're moving that rabbit tractor again. So what have I done? Because they're sitting there on their poop, which is the whole idea of the rabbit tractor is you move them off of their poop. I have taken um, some mixed orchard grass hay and some Timothy hay out every day and I've put it in their high traffic area to kind of cover up the poop and they've also eaten the hay since they've not had um, grass to graze. And then we have a metal bowl in there, kind of like what you would use for a dog or a cat. And I fill that up with water and I have gone out twice a day to top that off. And these rabbits have never drank out of a bowl before. And so I thought, well, here goes nothing. I, I knew, but at the same time, you just, you get question it every time. <laughs> pour the water in those bowls and they got straight to drink in. They knew exactly what to do. I didn't have to show them. <laughs> Thank God. Um, did not have to show them what to do. They went straight to drink in. And so, um, they drink, 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 drink up and it probably freezes a few hours later. And then I go out once again and fill it up. So my rabbits in the tractor are getting water twice a day in a bowl. And that metal bowl is nice because I can clink it and get the ice out and it doesn't break. You can also use the rubber bowls and that's another way to not have bowls breaking. In the freezing temps, you do not want to use any water bottles or watering systems that are not heated. I'm gonna repeat that. When there are freezing temps, do not use water bottles. Yes, you can rotate water bottles and have two sets going and thawing and blah de blah de blah but those water bottles are likely to break. They're not designed to deal with those freezing temperatures. And so I say remove all water bottles when it's freezing temps, or if you don't remove them, at least empty them so there's no water sitting in them. Um, glass, plastic, I don't care which, don't do them. Switch to bowls, you'll thank me. Because here's the deal with the bowls too, is it's easier to pour. If you've got these big clinky gloves on, you don't wanna be trying to unscrew stuff and unhook it and do the little clamps and blah de blah the bowls are nice because you're literally, if you have to, even if you have to switch out bowls, switching out bowls is way easier than switching out water bottles. Take the bowl out, put the bowl in, fill it up. The rabbits come drinking. It's a beautiful sight to see. Um, bowls are going to be so much easier to switch. Yes, they may tip their bowls over. Um, you can do things to set it up to where they won't. Some people have cut cages out so where the bowl kind of sits halfway in, halfway out, and they can actually pour from the outside and fill up that bowl. That works really well with your flat plastic um, Tupperware type containers. I mostly just have glass and crock bowls. And for the most part, they stay upright. That's with a single or two rabbits. If you have a whole litter, um, you're gonna run into them spilling it more. They also make um, rabbit bowls that hook onto the cage. Those would be an excellent option. Um, just anything that makes it easy to dump out ice and not have to worry about it breaking um, like you do with the water bottles. Um, 
I use bowls from the tractor and then I have one more setup of rabbits and that's our newest setup where our French lop is and then we have some grow outs in there as well. And it's under our back deck and there are water bottles that we normally use. We could purchase heated water bottles for it and run a core down across and use that, but we haven't yet. Um, we're, we gotta, we have, we have to, there's processes in my rabbit tree and my rabbits have to be able to pay for themselves a water bottle. And so once we've had this cage up long enough and I have paid off this cage from rabbit sales, whether that be manure, workshops, classes, whatever, and then I have some, some profits setting in the bank, I can then purchase them some water bottles and so I won't have to worry about that with them. But they're on the bowl system too and they have um, a tarp around three sides and then there's a canvas crossing a, the front where my French lop is because he is my special friend. I've just done a little experiment with the other ones and I have not put a canvas on their end and so far so good. Um, if that makes you uncomfortable or it's a little bit controversial, leave me a message in the comments. I would love to hear um, if you've had a horrible experience not blocking that third side in the winter months. These guys are grow outs and so I thought it would be okay to run this experiment because as awful as it sounds, it could also be dog food if something does happen to them. So there's, it's, you know, when you're homesteading, you're doing a lot of learning and a lot of experimenting because especially in my case where I try to educate people, I want to know what works and what doesn't work for my climate, for my area, for my rabbits. And so that's one of those. I have not put a front cover on that. And so far, those rabbits are doing good. I have given them uh, lots of hay at times. Um, they just eat it and play with it and they don't make a nest, I've noticed. So they seem to be doing well with it. We have gotten down to like negative one, negative two here not normal I think um, the cold days we've had like highs in the teens um, like today I think it was like a high 19 out there it's pretty cold and chilly so um, so far they're doing well they seem happy to see me when I go out with the water bowl so I'm content with that method so far this winter so we have the rabbits in those three locations the barn where majority of our rabbits are all on those heated waterers we have the tractor where I'm taking water out twice a day and we have the cage where I'm taking water out twice a day three bowls to fill up no big deal I'm okay with that we're also doing the chickens because our chicken water are broke and I'm doing the dogs but Again, still not that big of a deal because I like to go out, check on my animals, make sure everybody's doing well. If you are having to work in the midst of this, you definitely want to invest in the heated water so you're not having to make those multiple trips out there. So, kindling in these cold temps, what in the world? Well, I can't plan when it's going to snow. I can't plan when we're going to have these freezing temps. It never fails in nature. If you are breeding any sort of animals, they're going to have their babies when it's the coldest. <laughs> um, it just, it, it, I mean, it just seems to be the way the cookie crumbles. And so then you find out how hardy your rabbits or your animals are or how good your shelter is that you have set up for them. So we continue breeding as normal through the winter and it just falls where it falls. And this week we have uh, four rabbits due. I have um, Dottie, who is my a poly face rabbit. She has kindled. I think there's eight in there, seven or eight. I haven't pulled them out with these cold temps. My fingers are cold when I go out there. I really don't like handling much. So I just stick my hand in, feel around for any expired kits to remove. So far I have not felt any. And um, when it warms up this next week, I'll go and actually check those kits. So far, so good. She did not pull a ton of fur, which made me nervous, but there was some fur left over from her last kindling that I was able to put in there with them. And so far, I think they're doing great. Um, next up, I have Jade Dew. She is my Harlequin Doe. She pulled hair as soon as I put that box in there and it is looking nice and ready to go for when the time comes. I have not done any extra wrapping of the cages or anything like that. They are just in my barn with nest boxes. Um, some people use a kindling tote where they put um, a bigger contraption either inside their cage or attached to their cage, or they create a separate all closed in area so that the kids get out of the box or at least in an enclosed area. Um, we just check the wire to see if kits get out. And seasoned moms do pretty well. Some people do not breed for the first time. 
moms for the first time does during these winter months. They don't want it to be that hard on them. I go ahead and do it. I say, well, let's see how they do. Um, that can be a, a philosophy you follow or you can create your own. However you want to look at it, I say get them started as soon as possible and roll with it. If you would rather wait till spring, totally fine. Up to you. Your choice. Um, so we have the next one up is Newbie. And this is, her name is Newbie because... <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else, and she was Anubis, newest rabbit I had back at my rabbit tree. She was one that I had sold, and the people decided that they didn't want to do rabbits anymore, so they brought her back, and I could not remember the name they gave her. So if you're watching this and that's you, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I just called her Newbie. Newbies do tomorrow, and then I have Bonnie, which Bonnie is my oldest rabbit in the rabbit tree, and my hardiest. She has given me so many beautiful litters, healthy, large litters. Her rabbits are never my largest, but she has been faithful and very good at kindling. So I'm hoping to keep a doe from her um, just to pass on those really hardy genes in my rabbitry. Um, let's see here. I know Jade that's due. She was bred with my French lot buck, which you have seen him in a video, a couple videos back um, where I'm trying to see what I can get when I cross a French lot with a standard meat rabbit. And so there's different views on that. Some say it doesn't do as well. I gotta try it out for myself. And if nothing else, it's gonna hopefully make for some cute babies to enjoy this Easter season. And some delicious meat for my freezer. So um, that we have the kindling happening. We have the water happening. Let me see here. What else might questions might you have about rabbits in the winter? As I am laying here editing this, I got to thinking I get more nervous when I have kits that are about 10 days old and wanting to think about getting out of the box 10 to 14 to almost like 10, 10 days to three weeks essentially. If one gets out and they're not surrounded by more, that's when you run the bigger risk of them freezing. So kindling during this time doesn't stress me as much as when they're up and moving around. So just, I just want to add that here. Food, food goes as normal. If you want to, you can always put a little extra in there for them, um, food and hay. And uh, I also bring out the black oil sunflower seeds this time of year to help give them a little extra fat and calorie content to help them get through these cold temperatures. That's about all I can think of that we're doing extra this winter. We're not moving the rabbit tractor on the snow. We're having to take some water to a few of our animals. And we're just living on a prayer, seeing what can happen. I encourage you to do the same with your rabbitry as far as just try loving your animals the best you can and seeing how they fare and keeping those that fare the best because that's the, the beauty of um, raising animals is you want to keep the hardiest stock on your homestead. If you have any more questions and think of things that I did not think of, please leave them below. And I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Until next time, eat more rabbit. Uh, I'm recording. I'm to show you something. When I'm done recording, you can. Probably about 10 minutes. In here editing and realized I forgot to add that the shoes I have been wearing this week are from Hysia. They are a lined rain boot and they have worked out perfectly with one pair of socks. My feet have stayed dried and toasty. I think that's about all my brain can rack its head around right now. That did not make sense. Let's try that again.